I hate to give a backstory, but I realize it's necessary to do so in order to tell about an event I want to share. What I look like or what Stephanie looks like is not important, use your imagination to fill in the blanks with yourself and the love of your life. Stephanie and I found each other mutually attractive. What sparked between us wasn't based on looks, this story is about love. I'm married to Stephanie. Other people called her Step, but I never did, I thought it was a beautiful name. She also called me Robert, although everyone else just called me Bob, our affectionate names for each other were our formal names. That part will become important later. Mojave is astronomy. I like to look at the stars as well as the planets in our solar system. I have an assortment of telescopes, some people have a lot of guns, some people have a lot of vinyl records, I have a lot of telescopes, I get new ones just like anyone who likes the latest version of their favorite things, and is eager to get the newest modification, if you had asked me a few months ago if something was wrong in our marriage, I would have told you, hell, yes, lately, something seemed off. Stephanie and I had been married for three years. We talked about the right time to have kids, we had a wonderful moment when we both decided it was time. For two months, that's all we talked about, and then suddenly she didn't want to talk about it. Our sex life, which had been crazy with the excitement of having a baby, wasn't back to what it used to be, it became more like a ritual. It wasn't cold. The sex seemed mutually satisfying but the passion wasn't there, and then three weeks ago, the sex just stopped, I assumed it was because of female issues I could never understand, or because she changed her mind, both of my theories were wrong. I returned after work at my usual time, nothing really told me what was to follow. There was no strange car in the driveway, there was a stranger's car parked on the street, but I didn't realize it until later. I walked in to see my wife and a man I had never seen on our couch before, normally, I would call it a couch. But what I saw is the reason I describe it differently, they were sitting together holding hands. This was unusual, Stephanie usually let me know when someone stopped by to visit, I hoped it was some distant relative I'd never met. Hello, dear, will anyone be joining us for dinner tonight? Stephanie said, Robert please have a seat, I have something to tell you. I sat down in the chair across from the couch. It was strange, but I didn't realize it wasn't the only strange thing I would have to face. No sooner had I done so than Stephanie spoke again. Nigel and I have fallen for each other, good. That removed all doubt. I was silent for a moment thinking it over. While I did, she looked at the strange man, she looked at him the same way she had looked at me before he was looking at her the same way. There was no doubt that she was telling the truth, I had only one question so I asked it. Who the hell is Nigel? 3 said the man I had mistaken for Nigel. That's me. I know this is awkward for both of you. I'm only here to ease the pain of this exposure, it's painful for her. Apparently, pain relief only meant pain relief for Stephanie, my pain hasn't lessened one bit, so it didn't really help. Stephanie spoke next. I met Nigel at work, I didn't mean for it to happen, but it just did. I really thought I was being calm when I said, how did it just happen? Nigel pulled himself together and said loudly, don't raise your voice at her. She's an angel. Stephanie looked intently into his eyes and said, thank you, Pookie. I'm always here for you, Pookie Auntis. Pookie? Pookie Auntis? I was stunned. It was like a concussion, I used to play rugby so I used that word from experience, what I felt was like a knee to the head. I was completely disoriented, my next words reflected this. I contained my emotions again and said in a calm tone, maybe there is a way we could work this out, I've read stories about women who can be in love with two people at the same time, there is this romantic story where a woman was in love with two men. We should read it together before we make any hasty decisions. Nigel got up from the couch, stop yelling at her. Stop torturing this wonderful woman. Stephanie grabbed his arm and sat him back down on the couch. Thank you for protecting me my knight, then she kissed him. A light kiss on the lips that would have meant nothing before. 
Then she looked at me with a mixture of compassion and sadness. I can't love two men. It's not for me. I can only give my heart to one man at a time. I fell out of love with you the same way I fell in love with Nigel, can't we talk about this? We could go to counseling. Nigel squeezed her hand as she replied. That would just prolong the pain. Robert, my heart knows what it wants, I still love you and I always will. I just don't love you the way I used to anymore. Ending the relationship would be the easiest way for both of us, but we were only planning on having kids a few months ago. I don't understand, Stephanie looked at me with all the compassion in the world. That's why I had to do. They will be our favorite babies, oh, Pookie. She replied. They rubbed their noses gently against each other, I really didn't think they could do anything more disgusting if they tried, I was about to speak when Stephanie looked at me and spoke first, Robert, I know this is hard, and thank you for being so supportive during what I know is a painful time for you. I'll be back later to get my stuff, and I really hope we can talk as friends. I was still wondering how my calm demeanor was somehow interpreted as supportive while they both got up and walked away. I certainly wasn't supportive of any of it. I assumed they said what they had rehearsed in advance. Nigel got into his car and she got into hers. Of course, it was practical as she had to take her own car. However, I don't think I could have stood to see them leave in the same car together. I always thought I had a very good memory. That night, it was more like a curse. I replayed in my head everything Stephanie had said to me over the last six months. I'd never heard of Nigel. I had no idea who he was. She'd fallen in love with someone else and had an affair, and I'd never had a clue. How could I have missed it? Surely there were signs, as I mentioned earlier, that something was wrong. Now I could put all these things in context. She had fallen out of love with me, which explained her refusal to have sex. She had completely disconnected me from her bed for the past three weeks. I concluded that this was around the time she and Nigel realized their mutual desire, she said she could only have one love at a time. That's when she probably gave him her heart and body. I was still trying to make sense of it all when I got the call from the hospital. Stephanie had been in another car accident. Yeah. Another one. Stephanie was always too impatient. A year ago, she rear-ended someone on her way home from work when traffic came to a sudden stop. Physically, she was fine, but emotionally, she was shaken. She lost consciousness when the airbag deployed, she wasn't even hospitalized for that. This time was more serious, E was taken to the hospital because she was unconscious when the EMTs found her. I was told that she ran a red light at full speed and then swerved to avoid an oncoming car. She ended up crashing into the side of a roadside cafe. Apparently, this information came from Nigel, he didn't call me and tell me, of course. I got that information from the staff. I was still mulling over the information coming down on me when Nigel came up to me. Yes, he was there too. He got there before I did, but I hadn't seen him until then. He didn't express mutual grief or offer what would have been an unwelcome hug. He didn't say anything like, hi or let's talk. He just went over what was on his mind. Bob, I can't see her since I'm not family. You know, she was leaving you for me, so I'd appreciate it if you'd let me in, you have to approve it. Technically, I'm not family, but I am her family. Technically, given that approach I gave my answer, that was easy. No. It wasn't, if I were you, I'd let her go. I'd wanna move on. Let me comfort her. No, are you really gonna be an asshole at a time like this? Yes. With those words, I turned my back on him and headed for Stephanie's room. He was definitely right, I was being a jerk. I didn't feel guilty about it at all, not one bit. I barely had time to deal with the pain when Stephanie announced she was leaving. I didn't even have time to reach the anger stage. Seeing Nigel and listening to him, the grief was now replaced with anger. I couldn't lash out at my wife after she was in an accident. So being an asshole towards Nigel at the moment would be fine. I wanted answers, and I hoped I would get them. 
Until I did, Pookie wasn't going to get any closer, the fact that he was feeling pain was something of a bomb to me at that moment. I was intercepted by Dr. Beller. He looked like a wise and experienced physician, his gray hair reassured me that he was a found of knowledge, he told me that my wife probably had amnesia from what he could tell, otherwise, she was physically fine as she had been in a previous traffic accident, with her head, however, this time was different, except for soap operas, I had no idea what it really meant, what I had learned from the TV was that I had to hit her in the head again to bring back her memories, I soon realized that soap opera should not be considered a source of medical knowledge. Dr. Beller was very much like a doctor when he explained this to me. She has retrograde amnesia. I didn't realize there were different types. There is also a version called anterograde amnesia. People who have it can't create new memories. Have you ever seen a movie called 51st States? Yes, it's actually a criminally underrated Adam Sandler movie. All Adam Sandler movies are underrated. Well, let's all keep our opinions to ourselves. No point in pissing him off after all, he was her doctor. So if she doesn't have this kind of amnesia, what kind does my wife have? It's the kind everyone is most familiar with. She can't remember anything after a certain point, she'll create new memories anyway. Is it permanent? It rarely is. Usually, the memories come back, it's extremely rare that they never resurface again. How long does it take for the memory to come back, it varies. It could happen this week. It could take a year. It could take even longer. So at any point, she could just suddenly remember everything? It's entirely possible. It could also be that she starts remembering certain things, but not all of them. She gradually remembers more and more things. So what you're saying is that you really have no idea what's going to happen. That's exactly what I'm saying. Besides, you gotta give mama's boy another chance. Adam Sandler is a comedic genius. I will. Apparently, anyone can be a doctor these days. So much for believing in gray hair, they let me in to see my wife. She was awake and alert and confused. Robert, what's the matter? The doctors tell me I've just been in an accident. I grabbed her outstretched hand, and she squeezed mine, I squeezed back what's the last thing you remember? I was coming home from the office, the car in front of me stopped but I didn't hit the brakes in time, her memory seemed to go back to an accident that had happened a year before before this. It was before Nigel as far as I could tell, I also wondered if her memories went back to another accident, had she had some serious injury then that the doctors hadn't discovered? Or was it a coincidence? Those thoughts should have been discussed with the doctors another time or not. Right now, I was preoccupied with something else. Stephanie, you had another accident the day you left me. I left you. Why would I ever do that? You told me you were in love with Nigel. Nigel? Who the hell is Nigel? He's someone you know from work. I don't know anyone at work called Nigel. That was interesting. Either Nigel was new there, or she lied to me about how they met. Look, I don't want to worry you. We can talk about this another time. You can't just drop a bombshell like that and not talk about it. My first thought was that's exactly what you did to me, you whore. There was no point in saying it or coming out to spite her for something she didn't remember. I took the long way out, truthfully, with difficulty. I told her the whole story just as I had heard it from her. She interrupted me several times and was close to accusing me of lying. She seemed unable to comprehend anything I was saying. Once again, this is exactly how I felt when she and Nigel confessed their mutual love to me earlier that day. She was full of questions that I couldn't help but answer such as, did you cheat on me? No, Stephanie, I never did, and I never will. Did you beat me up or something? Same answer as last time, then why would I do it for no reason? I kissed her hand. Stephanie just come to your senses, we have time to talk about this. I'm glad you're okay. Stephanie was kept in the hospital for a few days while the doctors ran tests. I was there every day after work, so was Nigel. Every time I came in, he'd say something like, Bob, can we talk? 
No. Bob, you know that, no. Eventually, Stephanie was allowed to go home. We were both informed of what to expect. Stephanie was fine, mentally, and physically. Her memories would likely return perhaps slowly, perhaps all at once. I'd heard that before. She had heard it before. In that moment, Stephanie just wanted to go home. I wanted that too. So we nodded and agreed and signed all the forms without reading them, just to get the hell out of there. While we were nodding and signing, Dr. Beller mentioned that she could go to work, but her lack of memory might make it difficult for her to perform her duties. He suggested that she might want to find another job in a similar field. I simply said, thank you, Dr. Beller, for everything you've done. We want to go home now. Five minutes later, we did. That night, we slept cozily in each other's arms. I didn't want to let her go. It was like having a piece ripped out of me that was suddenly restored. I never wanted to lose it again. I slept more soundly since this whole thing started. When I woke up, we were still entwined. Although I breathed easier now that my beloved was safe under our roof again, that didn't mean I felt completely at peace. From what Dr. Heller had said, it sounded like this situation could change at any time. I wasn't sure how big the window was in which I had to find a permanent solution, but I had a second chance now and I wasn't going to just waste it doing nothing while the clock ticked. Of course, there were deep philosophical questions to consider. For example, if Stephanie had been able to fall out of love with me once so quickly, did I really want her back? Things like, should I look a gift horse in the teeth? I'd never really gotten into philosophy, so I ignored those thoughts and focused on the task in front of me. I needed to get Nigel off the stage before I could think of anything else. This problem was difficult enough. Stephanie wouldn't think of quitting his job. She loved her job. She was good at it. She called her boss and explained her memory situation. Her boss was sympathetic and welcomed her back. She told her that she would do well. I was kind of supportive of her return, but I still didn't know anything about Nigel. A lot of cheating starts at work. From the little I knew it was the same situation here it would definitely be a problem if he was actually someone she worked with. If Nigel was a co-worker of hers, she would run into him again. If that was the case, there was a possibility that he would get into her heart again. She went back to work despite my excuses, she seemed to be honest with me about how they met. Nigel really was a co-worker, Stephanie told me that she received a nice welcome. Everyone seemed to want to do what they could to help her. They were all informed about her memory loss. Only one person made her feel uncomfortable. Nigel. His way of welcoming her back was different. He kept wanting to talk to her alone and kept violating her physical boundaries, which was uncomfortable from a co-worker. Let alone a stranger. She received many hugs, but Nigel was the only one sniffing her hair. Stephanie told me that she drew boundaries very quickly. He didn't seem to heed the warning. He kept wanting to take her hand or hug her. All of this only made Stephanie angrier the company she worked for had no policy of no relationships between co-workers. Fortunately for me, it did have a strict sexual harassment policy. I realized I said, lucky for me, I still wasn't ready to think. Lucky for us. Not yet. Nigel was called into an HR meeting given the usual company lecture on the policy and told he needed to cease and desist. He was also reprimanded by his supervisor and told he needed to stop hitting on Stephanie. Nigel didn't stop. The first thing he did after being warned was to stand in front of Stephanie in front of multiple witnesses. Instead of speaking, he grabbed her and started kissing her. I assumed he expected muscle memory or something to lead to her kissing him back rather than the ensuing slap and kick to the groin. Nigel was fired for good reason. That didn't stop him from trying to see her. He showed up in the parking lot at work he showed up as she went out to lunch. It got so bad that she got a restraining order against him. That did a lot to ease my anxiety that the affair might resume. It's hard to have sex from 500 feet away. I did enjoy seeing my wife's lover suffer. I also enjoyed rekindling the relationship with my wife that I thought we had always had. Stephanie was back for a while, but I knew that could change if the memories came back to her. Even if that wasn't the case, 
Could something in her nature make her suddenly feel the same way about another man? One night, I was looking at the stars on my balcony through one of my old telescopes. I did this from time to time because I liked to think of myself as Galileo and wanted to see if I could see what he saw. I couldn't draw the conclusions he did. But I wanted to be able to, when I was frustrated, I pointed the telescope at the neighborhood as I often did. I'll be damned if I didn't see Nigel in the bushes, Stephanie came out on the balcony and asked what I was looking at. I just told her to look through the telescope while. This is some serious shit, should I call the police? Oh, no. He wants to see something. Let's give him something to see, what do you mean? I want him to see me making love to you, I want him to know that you're mine. He'll see you and me naked, you told me he's already seen you naked. No. You're the only one who's ever seen me naked, I don't think he's ever seen me naked. Then it's time for him to see it, I want him to see something he can never compete with, let's let him see something from me that he will never get or see again, let's show him two people and a love that will never be equaled. Let's talk about the pressure, this should have been hard for me. It wasn't. Her enthusiasm was contagious. Heck, it was hot, it had been years since our foreplay had been this intense, we kissed, stroked each other affectionately, then kissed again, and again, at this point, I had no idea if Nigel was still looking at us or not. I hoped he was, I didn't really care anymore. We were both in the present moment, enjoying each other's touches and tastes in a way we hadn't enjoyed in years. Stephanie doesn't make any noise when we have sex. She just makes quiet noises, if she ever speaks during sex, it's usually quiet, one-word statements like, yes, I talk more than she does. I can say up to three words, you're beautiful or Stephanie, my Stephanie. Tonight, we're putting on a show. Nigel shouted. No. We have to have our children. Our children. Apparently. This was the straw that broke Nigel the camel's back, he chose that moment to burst out of hiding. Pookie Hunters, please stop. I love you, at that moment, we were no longer paying attention, at that moment, I wanted nothing more than to have an orgasm, from the look on her face, she wanted the same thing. I can always tell when she's in the moment. She never looks at me. Her eyes look anywhere, but at me. Nigel realizing that his words were barely audible, decided to make a nonverbal statement with an action, this statement was made by breaking our glass door. He really could have just opened the door. It was unlocked, I assumed he wanted without wasting time to find out, despite what we see in the movies, it seems throwing your body full force into a window pane doesn't leave you unnoticed, judging by the screams, it seems to hurt as well. Nigel was a hell of a mess, he was halfway in and halfway out, stuck in the frame and struggling to free himself from the glass, I grabbed his arm and dragged him inside. He screamed again, his clothes were torn and his exposed flesh showed lacerations everywhere, instead of thanking me, he shouted, get your hands off me. I didn't even touch him after pulling him down as he lay prostrate on the floor, he really seemed indifferent to the fact that he was bleeding and stained. The area was tiled, but it would still have to be cleaned up. I called 911, at the time, I thought it was a medical emergency. Nigel looked like he had lost the battle to the chainsaw, however, after talking to the 911 operator, I realized I was also reporting a crime. I lived in a town where reporting a crime could result in the person reporting the crime being arrested or shot, let's just call that city Baltimore. It was one of those situations where I could have been handcuffed and spent the night in a cell because the police just arrested everyone at the scene and let the court system handle the incident. Two police officers arrived. One was a rather large and imposing fellow, the other was a smaller woman, and I got the feeling that you didn't want to mess with her. While Nigel and I were told to lie down and keep our heads down, Nigel tipped the scales in my favor again. While we were both being handcuffed, he shouted to Stephanie. Pookie Antes. I'm coming back to rescue you. The larger police officer was Officer White Cloud. That was all he and his partner needed to hear. 
I really hoped that someday he would be promoted and eventually become Chief White Cloud. When the dust settled, the court decided that Nigel had violated the restraining order. He was also guilty of breaking and entering. Nigel was going to disappear from our lives for a while. It didn't hurt when Officer White Cloud took the stand where he mentioned Pookie Hunters in front of the most liberal judge that could have presided over the case. Did I mention that the judge was also a woman who hated stalking? At that moment, I wanted to kiss her, but I didn't want to test fate. Nigel went to prison, oh, not forever. He got a sentence of two years and served three months, it was still an unexpectedly harsh sentence. He was now a criminal. That would put an end to his future, it looked like he finally got the message because there was no more communication from Pookie, that was one problem that could be done away with, but there was still a time bomb bringing back her memories, I selfishly didn't want that to happen. Considering how she was thinking about Nigel now, I don't think it would be good for her either. Nevertheless, we had to move on, ready for it. I had no doubt that if it ever happened, we would be together. I also had no doubt that it would be a complication we didn't need. That's where my story ends. In my opinion, they live happily ever after. This story is best appreciated as a humorous story, which it should be. However, I realize that some readers will find this story unfinished because the reasons for this novel were never explained. I didn't explain it because I don't know the reasons. I used a collection of real-life experiences to describe Stephanie's thoughts when she decided to leave him. I know this that just from experience in my own life, as well as talking to women and men, the I just fell in love with him explanation has happened more than once. If anyone finds this story incomplete. I already know in my mind what will happen if she regains her memories, it will still be a happy ending that will involve therapy counseling and arguments.